A very good morning to all my dear friends. I am Prashant Mamani. I hope you all are doing good and a very warm welcome to Study IQ. Dear friends, uh, look at the statement here by Jalaluddin Rumi. I'm sure you know him. He's a very famous uh, Sufi saint. He's written numerous uh, poetry and uh, this is a line by him. Shine like the whole universe is yours. I'm sure it has a very deep philosophical or spiritual meaning behind it. But uh, rather than me providing you an interpretation on this thing, I will leave it on you guys uh, to think about it. And uh, if you have uh, something to share, then I would love to hear from you. Stick your views in the comment section or what do you understand by this line of Jalaluddin Rumi. With this, dear friends, uh, up to 35% off. Uh, we have extended uh, the deadline uh, because of uh, continuous uh, demand from uh, many of you right uh, so you have uh, finally persuaded us to extend this deadline so up to 35 percent off is available on our pen drive and tablet courses for a very short period of time do check out studyiq.com uh, to know more about it uh, with uh, this dear friends the first editorial that we have is uh, from uh, or you can say is pertaining to a tug of war that is going on between a judiciary as well a judiciary and government right we know that uh, this two uh, judiciary and government are important pillars of our democracy isn't it uh, yesterday we were talking about it it was in as a news item and uh, uh, the IT minister right he questioned the uh, judiciary he said that don't you trust the prime minister he said that uh, the country or the people of this country are having uh, you can say faith or you can say that they are trusting uh, the prime minister but why can judiciary trust prime minister of course uh, see the main problem between government and uh, judiciary is that uh, in 2015 supreme court uh, struck down this uh, national judicial appointment commission right uh, it was uh, this njac uh, was uh, made possible with the help of uh, constitutional amendment and uh, this constitutional anything pertaining to judiciary it has to pass through at least 50 percent of uh, states as well and all the process was done but finally in 2015 supreme court said that this is a breach of uh, independence of judiciary so this was uh, struck down by by a supreme court and uh, since then we are seeing that uh, government and uh, supreme court are having a sort of uh, you can say a cold war uh, uh, with each other and uh, collegium system we know how uh, collegium system works we have talked about it in detail right i have explained to you different types of collegium you have collegium in high courts uh, you have collegium in supreme court and uh, very briefly let me tell you that uh, supreme court's uh, collegium consists of uh, five members the chief justice of india is the main man or woman uh, whether if just in case if we have a a woman uh, judge so chief justice of india and you have four other supreme courts uh, uh, supreme courts judge uh, judges and uh, these are the most senior ones right so this basically is uh, uh, the collegium of supreme court and uh, it is the supreme it is the collegium that uh, decides all the matter pertaining to elevation of any judge from supreme court from high court to supreme court or transfer of any high court judges uh, from one court to another court things like that so it came into effect or this was this collegium system was introduced in our country in 1993 let me tell you that uh, in constitution there is no mention of uh, collegium system uh, right it was uh, from the second judges case that we got this collegium system and uh, the biggest uh, you can say drawback or the demerit of this collegium system is that uh, there is a lack of transparency last year it was uh, one of the supreme court judge uh, he uh, he said that uh, there is no point of going into the meeting of this collegium because uh, there is only what you have to say is uh, either you say yes or no even if you say no then as well it is the cji who will decide and so uh, cji will decide uh, which person should be elevated to supreme court and things like that so uh, he was not happy about uh, this uh, collegium system and uh, of course uh, it is not transparent uh, yesterday we were talking about that in public life public life is like a glass house isn't it uh, transparency is something that is uh, seeked by 
uh, all the citizens, particularly in democracy. And uh, there are many questions uh, on this thing, right? Uh, is the separation of power between our legislatives, our executives, and uh, judiciary uh, are are they real? Uh, can we can, is is a separation of power something? Uh, that is tangible uh, or you can also ask that uh, the way supreme court is uh, many a times we find uh, it is termed as judicial overreach it is uh, stepping outside its domain and uh, it is uh, providing this uh, directive policies and things like that so this is a, a problem right uh, everyone every all these three pillars they have their own area of work and uh, of course they should not uh, cross this line and uh, memorandum of procedure is still not uh, decided by government and ju uh, government and judiciary and what mop is all about memorandum of procedure means uh, it is basically protocol or you can say steps right uh, how you will uh, select uh, or elect judges uh, but still these things are not decided by both these uh, pillars of our democracy and this is a this is causing a problem uh, in our democracy and of course we know that uh, the problem between these two executive uh, or government and judiciary is eventually going to harm uh, harm our democracy and it is it is not going to be beneficial for uh, the citizen of this country and the best solution we know about the solution basically they have to sit down together and they have to discuss and sort out all the issue that's uh, the most simple solution that we can talk about with this dear friends uh, today's newspaper is quite interesting because uh, uh, we can find a sort of interrelated news right there are so many most of the news that we have most of the articles that we have uh, you can interrelate uh, them with the news item and here you can see a news item see uh, here supreme court is saying that we cannot frame a law uh, so uh, regarding this uh, a United Nations uh, Convention Against Torture. There is a special video lecture available on our YouTube channel. It is available both in Hindi and English. Uh, so if you want to know more about it, do check out this uh, lecture. And uh, basically, former Union Law Minister uh, Ashwini Kumar, uh, he is the man who has uh, applied or he has filed a PIL in Supreme Court that why India is not framing or why it is not coming out with a law against the torture right we know that uh, in police custody in uh, various other places uh, torture is still practiced in our country but uh, it is a banned thing waterboarding and there are other m various methods of torture right uh, sleep depriva uh, deprivation and uh, beating people and there are many things uh, and, and in fact you would be surprised uh, to know when you will go through this lecture that uh, even kids right small kids are being killed in our police station so we definitely need a law but supreme court has said that uh, it is not our domain it is uh, for the government to decide whether they want this law or not so you can club this uh, to this editorial as well as uh, this uh, uh, news item together the second one is coming from pakistan now uh, let me tell you before we move ahead that uh, see here you find uh, in in if you go online you will find different types of maps right uh, when i said different types of maps uh, i mean to say that in some maps you will find that this portion is been uh, shown as a territory of pakistan uh, we know it very well that uh, yeah, this can be photoshopping cannot take away kashmir from our, our our country so uh, don't worry about this sort of maps right uh, just uh, take the bits and pieces that are important for you now uh, here this person is prime minister of pakistan uh, he this man here he was a law minister why i'm saying he was a law minister because finally he has resigned and uh, here you can see that this is a group that uh, that has uh, protested uh, against this law minister now uh, what happened here in pakistan this group here tly was not happy about a, a, a small change that was made in the oath taking ceremony or, or you can say when you take an oath uh, you have to read some lines isn't it so this uh, tly was not happy about uh, some changes that were made and uh, they said that it is blasphemy that means it is against 
uh, our religion that's what tly said and uh, the sad thing is uh, you can say uh, for a very long period of time nearly for three months right nearly for three months uh, this group has captured or you can say they were creating blockade in different parts of uh, pakistan uh, there was a long standoff between authorities and this protesters and uh, of course we know when we talk about pakistan that it is the army that is master of rooster right in a couple of days ago we heard this line from chief justice of india so this can be applied here that the master of rooster in pakistan is army chief or the army army is uh, the main force that is driving pakistan and we know that one of the main reason why we are not able to sort out the issue of jammu and kashmir with pakistan is because uh, every time there is any sort of talks taking place between india and uh, pakistan or you can say the government of india and government of pakistan then it is always army creating some sort of troubles and uh, this uh, hampers all our efforts uh, in 2008 or you can say 26 11 incident a very few people would be knowing that uh, a very important minister uh, if i'm not wrong then he was uh, a foreign minister of pakistan he was in india he came here to sort out issues that are going on between india and pakistan at the same time right uh, when he was here when things were going on on one side on the other side we saw this 26 11 and if you go back to the history then you will find consistently this thing that every time there is any sort of uh, uh, any, any sort of uh, decisions or you can say any efforts are being taken to sort out the issues then every time army is creating some sort of problems between india and pakistan anyways uh, so finally this uh, mr hamid he resigned this person here he has to resign uh, and uh, this indicates that there is a, a very serious instability in Pakistan and you have one more article on this thing uh, here closing down a country and uh, these are the four uh, important uh, cities that were captured you can say or a blockade was uh, done here it is uh, here you have uh, Peshawar then you have Islamabad here Lahore as well as Karachi these are the four major cities this also indicates that uh, this group is not a very well famous group right this tly only 3000 you can imagine 3000 people were able to block all these different parts of pakistan these are major con ma major cities of pakistan so this is a very serious matter and the other thing is that it also indicates that someone is supporting this group uh, can you imagine that government of pakistan has to close down all the tv channels all the news channels not tv channels but the news channels uh, apart from this uh, official pakistan television and uh, this twitter facebook and youtube and everything was shut down and uh, institutions like education institutions and other institutions were forced uh, to close down because of this protest going on the other thing is, uh, dear friends, that uh, in 2014 as well, there was this similar sort of protest took place and uh, it was widely reported and it was proven as well that it was army who was supporting this uh, former cricketer Imran Khan and this uh, Tahirul Kadri. Uh, Tahirul Kadri lives in Canada, right? This person is living in Canada, but uh, whenever there is any sort of opportunity in Pakistan, political opportunity, then this person will fly. Uh, back home to pakistan and then he will take some part and then he will go away so this is a, a situation that is going on in pakistan and this is very serious for our country because as i told you that uh, as far as army is going to run this country we are never going to see any sort of peace taking place between india and pakistan at one point of time we may feel that we don't want any sort of friendship with pakistan but remember we cannot change our neighbor uh, the best thing if you think about the long-term solution then the best thing is that uh, peace come back to pakistan or you can say if there is a political stability if the government is having an upper hand in pakistan then only we will be able to see something uh, something peaceful between our country and we know that uh, it is uh, uh, it is not viable for us to have an enemy right in our neighborhood right uh, it will it is not uh, economically viable as well it is not good for people to people contact because at the end of the day we were one country right the culture is more likely same and uh, the best solution or one of the solution is 
that it is the youngsters or you can say the youth of Pakistan, right? They have to demand a change. They have to come out and a revolution in Pakistan can only change this thing. And uh, here you can also see this article is talking about the statements uh, given by General Bajwa. Army chief, he's saying that uh, both sides, that means he's talking about this TLY and the government, he's saying that both sides should maintain peace and avoid violence. Imagine, you will never see this sort of things in our country, right? Army chief, uh, he would be speaking about insurgency and things like that, but he will never interfere with uh, things going on between any group and government uh, he is not allowed to do that at all in our country this indicates that it is the government who, who is the most powerful in our country apart from that uh, he also said that uh, we cannot when uh, government of uh, pakistan asked for army's help to sort out this uh, tly members uh, doing all this protest and violence and things like that uh, at that point of time uh, is this army man or the army said that the people of Pakistan they love army and army cannot use force against its people so we cannot help you things like that and uh, Pakistan uh, Islamabad's high court has taken a tough stand a very brave you can say just uh, a, a judge from Islamabad high court has said that uh, uh, it is very strange that uh, as a mediator, army is or military is uh, playing a part as a mediator. In fact, uh, uh, army should be taking orders from uh, government rather than playing a mediator role. Anyways, uh, moving on to uh, another item and this is uh, an article written by Kapil Sibal. Uh, now, of course, uh, let me tell you, see Kapil Sibal, uh, he was a minister, right, union minister. He is a Supreme Court lawyer as well. And uh, the thing is, we know that uh, he belongs to Congress Party. So many a times uh, uh, we find that his articles are against uh, BJP, right? Uh, this is quite clear. We know it. We know this thing, that that's how it works in our country. Anyways, this article has uh, some important points for us to understand uh, because many a times we talk about uh, unity in diversity. We also see different uh, types of violence taking place in our country the recent Padmavati one if you go uh, if you dig down a little bit then you will find that it is about uh, about two communities right it is not about uh, Rajput community alone it is more about uh, because Khilji was a Muslim and uh, Padmavati was a Hindu queen so you know these are the things that are working behind all those issues and then you have this cow issue going on in our country in many parts of our country you also see that uh, this clothes uh, some certain types of clothes should not be uh, worn by uh, ladies and this there are many groups who are dictating all these things and uh, when we are referring uh, when we are going through this article then we will take this whole portion because if you go back to the history of our country then you will find that at one point of time this whole portion was uh, at that point of time of course it was not india that we know today but generally speaking when we talk about subcontinent we were having a unique culture and uh, this unique culture is called hinduism now let me tell you i'm uh, exp speaking here with very responsibility that i'm not talking about hinduism as a religion if you go back a couple of years then you will find that supreme court of our country has defined Hinduism right it has defined Hinduism and what Supreme Court has said it has said that Hinduism is not a religion right uh, it is a bit different you have to keep your mind or your views little bit open here right uh, see we know that uh, many of uh, our citizens right they belong to Hindu religion right we are not talking about Hindu religion here we are talking about Hinduism Hinduism is different than Hindu religion what Hinduism is all about that uh, as per Supreme Court it said that it is a way of life and uh, this way of life you find uh, uh, this uh, practice or this way of life or Hinduism is been practiced in this uh, subcontinent for a very long period of time and when we say Hinduism we are talking about that way of life in which all different ideas are allowed all different ways of prayers are allowed all different ways of uh, you can say uh, if even if you are uh, not 
you can say even if you are atheist then as well it is fine in our country that's that's what it used to be that is a consciousness level that was there in our country uh, i will give you a couple of examples love I i'm sure you know about khajurao temple right now khajurao temples are not something that you can call pornography it is more about consciousness of the people uh, like at that point of time any topic that we that we can imagine were freely discussed by the people of our country this was the consciousness level of india at that point of time and uh, if you say that you go and pray in the mosque then this was uh, well accepted by all the people there was nothing strange at all because it was not about tolerance we find that many a times uh, people are talking about uh, tolerance right uh, i would say that uh, tolerance is something that i don't like you but then as well i am giving you a space this is not i believe or what i understand india is all about india is about more about acceptability right uh, tolerance and acceptability acceptability has a huge difference between them right when you say acceptability we mean to say that i accept everything there is no you can say a space for any tolerance because there is no hate at all and uh, nowadays we are seeing that uh, there are many groups in our country right now there is no point of uh, associating them with any particular religion because uh, you find sensible people in all different categories right you find sensible rich people you find sensible poor people you find uh, very generous poor people as well as rich people right and that applies to religion or whatever identities that we associate ourselves with if you go through the book of amartya sen he has written a book on identity i cannot remember the name at present but uh, in that book he has said and uh, i'm sure you will agree with this thing that uh, say for example in the morning time you would be following this the hindu analysis of study iq so you would be a student of study iq in the morning time in the afternoon time you would be playing tennis at a particular tennis court in your area so you would be member of that tennis court in the evening time you would be watching big boss or any other uh, serial that you may like so you would be a fan of big boss or any other serial whatever it is going on so you can see that uh, even throughout a day we change or our identity right that keeps on changing our association with different things keeps on changing so that's how identity works but there are people who know how to exploit these things and uh, this sort of things like uh, asking women what to wear and what to not wear uh, whether you marry this person or that person everything is in as per constitution it is an adult can decide whatever he or she wants to do as far as they are not harming anyone community religion this is all they, it is nothing to do they have nothing to do with individual choice and religion again a couple of uh, years ago again supreme court has said about this thing that uh, it is between god and uh, an individual right uh, a third party is not allowed it is a very personal thing between a person and a god so that's basically about i i think we have discussed more about this thing but i'm sure this will help you with your essay writing with your uh, ethics paper as well as uh, your understanding and your interview just in case if you find any sort of this sort of question and as i told you that there are so many things that you can relate with each other here is a picture this uh, picture you will find it in the hindu today you can see here that uh, people from or uh, you can say religious uh, gurus from different uh, religion right uh, you can see here uh, clearly you can see here uh, a priest uh, uh, you can see some gurus and you can see some um, islamic uh, gurus as well so this is what india is all about moving on dear friends uh, this one is about childhood foregone now uh, the target of uh, ending child labor in this world right uh, we are not able or we will not be able to achieve this thing and uh, we know that uh, sustainable development goals uh, does uh, talk about this uh, 2030 sdgs talk about ending this child labor and education should be provided health should be provided to all children in the world and things like that but uh, even after 20 years so it it looks like uh, it will take 2050 to 
to get rid of this child labor and international labor organization estimates that uh, at present there are millions of children that are working right child labor is still going on i'm sure living in india we have seen this thing many a times we find that if we go to a restaurant or some other place then people are uh, children are particularly this tea stalls where you find small children working over there now the thing is uh, there is one more item here and uh, this is this are the words of kailash satyarthi we know that he has got nobel prize for children's right and what he has said and this is a very good point here you can note this point down you can use it for your answer writing mains examination answer writing that millions of job opportunities could be created uh, for the unemployed if child labor was eradicated across the world this is a very right statement isn't it you can create at least 210 million jobs uh, if you if you take away all the child labor or all the children who are doing this labor work and this can be filled by the adults so this is a very unique point here one more thing that i would like to add here is that of course we need proper laws we have some laws as well and you know the story of our country it is always the implementation that does not take place right it is because of implementation a lack of implementation this sort of things are still going on in our country and i have a very practical example for you guys uh, i have uh, seen this thing I, I, i'm not sure whether uh, whether in different parts of our country we have this sort of uh, uh, you can say uh, awareness uh, right there are few companies uh, if i'm not wrong uh, then they are practicing this thing in our country as well but in developed countries right uh, i have uh, have some practical example or experience with this thing that most of the countries uh, most of the developed countries if you go there then you will find that uh, say for example if you go to have a coffee over there as well you will find many advertisement like things that they will have posters that our coffee is an ethical coffee because uh, the place from where we import our coffee beans the farmers are paid their due share uh, they are covered with insurance and uh, things like that. So it is all about ethical supply chain and eliminating this slavery. Um, you might have heard about a company called uh, Tesco. It is a supermarket and uh, this Tesco talks about, of course, all big giant companies, they talk about ethics and things like that. But uh, it was found that uh, Tesco was using some slaves from Eastern European countries. Uh, for packaging and things like that so these are the things uh, there was all there is also a company called primark uh, a, a cloth making or you can say fashion uh, brand company uh, primark and uh, it imports many things from our country india and uh, it was also reported that uh, the clothes that are made for primark are made by some children in our country from india so many a times uh, you see that whenever this sort of things uh, come out then people will stop buying things from this uh, this Tesco and Primark and other companies and this creates a pressure so what i'm trying to say here is that awareness of uh, people right uh, until and unless society will not take part in this elimination of this slavery or you can say child labor then we laws are not going to be enough uh, imagine that if you see if you go for a tea and if you find someone a, a small child is serving you tea then you uh, you just step out of that place and you never go back over there because of this thing or you can inform the owner as well that if you are going to do this then we are not going to come and visit your place and this will create a pressure on the owner as well to appoint some adults moving on dear friends you have two articles here one is about e-read that is electronic read most of us are doing this thing and this one is about uh, it is providing some tricks uh, or you can say some tips right or how to concentrate or how to read or how to e-read basically dear friends i have done uh, i have gone through many good work on uh, reading and how to read and things like that some of the best writers in the world um, i have uh, read all of them and not, not all of them but some of them i have gone through the best ones and uh, what i find is that uh, it is a sort of thing like uh, it is basically about practice right the more you practice the better you will get 
with it. Uh, this is the crux of reading. And when you are e-reading, basically when you are reading something online, so make sure that all these destructive things, see notification and all these things are designed to draw your attention. Uh, I would suggest, right, uh, that if you are studying, at the time when you are studying, uh, you should get rid of your mobile phone as well because uh, on a psychological level if you get a call from your friend or someone that uh, we are going out for this and that do you want to come over there etc then this will distract you this will take away your energy uh, but uh, in your initial years or initial months if you if you create a firewall around you uh, then this will help you a lot and that's what this article is talking about with this uh, this is about long shadow of russia and it is talking about the possible uh, you can say some sort of uh, uh, interference from russia due, uh, on this uh, trump's election that russia has played a role in ensuring that hillary clinton is not elected and it is uh, this trump that is uh, that gets elected and things like that but still we don't have any proof regarding this thing it is also it, it is talking about that this could have been done or this could might have happened and things like that moving on uh, dear friends uh, Aadhaar cases may go to constitution bench this has been said by chief justice of india uh, we know that uh, since uh, 2014 this thing is going on so hopefully as soon as uh, let's hope that uh, this other thing is sorted out as soon as possible and uh, you can see here that uh, there, are, there are some deadlines that are not far from where we are standing at present uh, 31st december for Aadhaar and bank seeding Aadhaar card with your bank account and 6th february for other seeding Aadhaar card with your mobile here i have a picture from a pink paper and it is talking about this justice sri krishna panel a white paper which is here on data protection and uh, remember it is b and krishna committee that is going to go through this um, uh, this uh, protection for data under this Aadhaar card it has been set up by ministry of uh, electronics and information moving on to another item and uh, you can relate this thing with what we have discussed regarding hindutva or hinduism not hindutva but hinduism uh, see this is a case of uh, hadiya and uh, the whole story is here she uh, was in love with a person who was who is in fact a muslim and this uh, girl here she was hindu and uh, she was uh, both of them are adult uh, they want to get married with each other and uh, they did married as well but uh, the high court uh, said uh, nullified uh, their marriage and now supreme court has restored everything and uh, at that point of time this was a big issue this whole story is from kerala so she's back with her husband now this one is uh, on naga talks uh, the person that you can see on your screen his name is r n ravi he is a interlocutor remember there is a difference between special representative and interlocutor want to know more about it again there is a special lecture uh, on jammu and kashmir and interlock uh, this uh, special representative uh, dineshwar sarma's his appointment at that point of time i have delivered two lecture hindi and english and i have explained in detail what is the difference between this interlocutor and special representative so if you haven't gone through it i would recommend all of you to go through it and from this you will understand what are what is a uh, in uh, counter insurgency um, how you do counter in inter insurgency how you tackle this thing and uh, uh, how government is going ahead with this etc so what he has said is uh, this rn uh, ravi he has said that uh, government uh, wants to talk with other people as well it is not enough uh, just to have a deal with this n s c n i m uh, we are we want to talk with other groups as well because uh, n s c n i m is not representing all different people of nagaland uh, moving on uh, this is a picture here and it is a quiz as well for you right uh, this uh, is, as you can see right the smoke is coming out from a volcanic mountain so you have to tell me which place uh, is this right uh, which place is this whether it is in india or whether it is some other country if it is some other country then which country is uh, this or in, in which country this mountain is located now uh, telecom sector news from telecom sector we know that the health of telecom sector is not in a good shape because of uh, 
too much depth and uh, remember this is a very important sector all this internet and everything that we are using and uh, in fact you can say that uh, this sector has helped our country to leapfrog uh, into 21st century right the changes that we are seeing in our society in economy in polity everything uh, credit we can easily give it to uh, one of the main driver is telecom sector and when this sector is not doing well then it will impact other things too uh, it will create job losses and uh, uh, lack of technology and all these things can take place and we will uh, you can say we will be a bit behind other countries in a tough competition uh, so it is important for us uh, for the government to reduce this uh, telecom sector fees and gst that is applied on uh, telecom services is too high as well these are some of the issues and again special lecture is available on this thing so if you want to know more about it just uh, go through it is a very you can say a precise and a precise lecture on this telecom sector dear friends this is about ivanka trump and global entrepreneurship summit that is going to take place in uh, means uh, that took place in hyderabad and uh, the unique thing about this uh, global entrepreneurship uh, summit is that uh, uh, women delegates of the event comprised 52.5 percent this was this is the first time uh, something like this has taken place in the world and uh, this uh, global entrepreneurship summit is been conducted by india and usa together uh, these are the answers for yesterday's question uh, first one is uh, muhammad shah second one is all of the above when it comes to ad hoc judges and the third one is catching fish and today's questions are the systematic organization of mughal empire into subas was first done by a babar b akbar c humayun or d jahangir uh, second question copenhagen is an example of des type of port it is a filling the blank question a naval b is packet station C is entry port or D is inland and the third one is all species of lemur are uh, endemic to which of the following places uh, Seychelles you have Galapagos Island third one is uh, New uh, Caledonia and D is Madagascar with this dear friends I end this discussion here don't forget to subscribe share like pass your valuable comments as well as your answer remember you have to answer regarding that picture as well that volcanic picture and with this uh, let me remind you again that up to 35 percent discount is on at present and uh, it is there for a very limited period of time so do check out studyiq.com with this i end this discussion i will see you all soon till then enjoy your studies take care goodbye and jai hind